hello everybody it's time to look at another video of me editing a photo in DxO Photo Lab. it's been a while since I've created a video sorry for that but uh, I wanted to show how powerful raw photo editing can be and this is the final edit of what I'm going to go over uh, I shot this a couple weekends ago in a small lake out in Dowling Michigan um, it's a little private lake that uh, family has a property on and I was there for the weekend and storm had just passed or was coming and it was a break in the clouds and the moon was rising over the lake and reflecting over the water and it was just a fantastic view but being out in the middle of the woods and kind of in the middle of nowhere there's not a whole lot of ambient light except for what the moon casts and when you see what the original photo looks like you're going to be a little bit floored at what was recovered despite how dark this already is. Um, and I just want to highlight again how important it is to shoot raw if you want to recover a lot of stuff, especially when lighting and exposure is very difficult. I had to do, um, uh, I basically had to expose this for the moon and worry about the rest. And normally I probably would have bracketed this and, and done an HDR um, blending with three different exposures or more. But um, clouds are moving really fast. I didn't really have time to do all that calculation and setup and stuff. I kind of just st stuck the camera on a tripod and fired and hoped for the best. So next time I will be a little bit more prepared. But for now, let's take a look at what I've got. So here's the f final render, final edit. And that's what I started with. And let me zoom out a little bit so you can see the full frame. Because yes, I did end up cropping. So, first thing I ended up doing is trying to bring back some of the exposure. So, notice how, if I zoom in on the moon here, it's pretty blown out even though I try to expose for it. And it's a small little spot, and I wanted to get enough exposures to still capture some other information and not just the moon. So, it is a little blown out. You're not going to see detail in the moon itself, but you'll see the clouds, and the clouds glowing pretty nicely. So, I dropped the highlights almost all the way actually but not quite and it doesn't do a, a whole heck of a lot but it does help bring back some of the cloud detail and you can see here where that went to play and you can also see my exposure edits over here as well so you'll see how that works as I play with it and if we bring up the shadows quite a bit you'll start to see things start to recover now this you can't do in a JPEG if you shot JPEG, all it would be doing is turning all that extra detail in the shadows brighter gray. You're not going to get the details back. And all the clouds here that were lost, here, let me go back to zero. And you can do that by double clicking on the slider. And notice how black this is. If you shot in JPEG, you would not get the details back if we brought this up. And I started playing with the midtones as well. And you know, I wanted to keep some shadow and silhouette here because it kind of brings more out with the with the scene. And notice also, there's a lot of color noise coming in here. Some of that might be from hot pixels, other it might just be from noise because of the lack of light in the scene. We're gonna get to that in just a minute. Um, but I didn't see very well through my viewfinder or even with my own naked eye at the time how much of the foreground I'm capturing in this shot. So I did do a little bit of a crop. I wanted to get a little bit more of the foreground out of the way and do more of a rule of thirds with the shot and kind of do a little bit of a framing with it. And it's a little similar if you compare the two. I think I got a little bit tighter on my final edit, but that's okay. I did play with the contrast, but not too much because it's already a dark photo to begin with. And because I've got the Elite version of DxO Photo Lab, I do get the option for their no prime noise reduction. I highly recommend it. It's one of the best noise reduction tools I've used, and you almost don't have to play with it. So right here is a preview of how much noise is going to be reduced. And with the HQ high quality noise reduction that's built into the standard version of Photolab, it still looks pretty noisy. And you can grab this crosshair and we can 
look at it anywhere we want and see different samples in different spots. Now if I click Prime, yes I can manually adjust this, but notice we have magic wands here that kind of does it automatically for us. And look how much cleaner that is. You won't see the noise reduction in this preview over here in, in what you're working with. It's just too much processing power for for the computer to to handle. So you're not going to see it in here no matter what you do. It's going to only show up in here. The other thing I ended up playing with was a little bit of the white balance, but not by much. If you look at the before and after, you'll see I raised the magenta just a little bit and the temperature just a little bit. We're at 4,000 and negative 11 here on the original and my final edit I was negative 4 and 4,200. So if I bring this a little bit higher, it should be somewhere about what I had. Sometimes it can be a little bit hard to, to get to. We'll go a little bit warmer and a little too magenta. Let's go with that. And that gives us a bit of that color cast I was going for. And it doesn't look natural, but it does kind of bring out a little bit more color in a colorless image. I also went ahead and I have the film pack. And let me double check that that's what I ended up doing. Yes, I used the film pack to kind of add more to the color. So if I come to this category, and I went with color negative films, and you can go through these one by one, and I believe I did Kodak Elite Color 400. Yes. And that brings a lot more color here, but notice it also darkened a lot of the image as well. So that's something I played with on the local adjustments. But before I did that, and I'm not going to go through all of these hot pixels, these color, color noise pixels here, um, in, for this video, but I do want to show you what I ended up doing. And right at the top here, we have this repair button, this repair tool. Click on that, and I zoomed in to these color pixels. And I just clicked on it, and it kind of took away those color noise pixels. And it can be a little bit tedious. And you have to scan your whole picture to get to them. And if I zoom out, you can see it's a lot cleaner in that spot I worked on. And I can come down here and get these down here. And it just helps clean that up. And suddenly that those color spots aren't so scary anymore. And this isn't noise here. I'm not entirely sure what this is. I don't remember, but the repair tool does work on more than just a pixel-sized um, problems in the picture. So I just took that out, and it looks a little bit more clean, I guess you could say. That piece wasn't out of place anymore. And I'm not going to go through all these different color pixels for the sake of this video. It's going to be very time consuming. It was when I went through it all. But uh, we're going to move on to local adjustments. And because our film simulation, our film rendering, darkened a lot of this picture, we I ended up using some local adjustments. And if you right click, uh, I believe it's command click on a Mac, you have these different tools here. and. I don't stick to just one, but for this for this photo, I just use the control points, um, and I use the auto mask a lot as well. And when auto mask kind of fails me, I supplement that with the brush. Um, I might show you another video later where I use a combination of auto mask and the brush to get um, something done that I was having some trouble with. So with the control points. I wanted to bring more detail out in these clouds up here. It's all black right here and there's not a whole lot of detail except for the color noise that I didn't get rid of yet. And the final render, final edit, I did clean those up so uh, if you see that, it's something I would do. And I just clicked and I dragged this edge out to cover the span that I wanted to edit. 
and I bumped the exposure not a whole lot just enough to see the details and what's nice with the control points as long as you've got the center of that one control point highlighted with blue you can click and add another control point and you don't have to adjust them individually you can shrink them to cover a span of space that you want but you'll notice we're starting to get the cloud detail back and I had the same issue with the water so I wanted to bring that back as well so I came down here I, I like to turn off my local adjustments see how it looks in case I want to make any changes to it and I might actually lower that exposure a bit because it's starting to get a little noisy a little unnaturally bright um, but you notice how you can still see the tree outline the tree silhouette over here and that's what I was trying to go for is add some separation between the trees in the foreground and the clouds in the background so I click back on local adjustments I can come back here click on my control point notice how by default it only shows the one but when you highlight over it it shows the rest of them associated with it but if I click on that I can adjust this a little bit and I'm going to take this down a little bit more and I can click on local adjustments and see how that looks and that looks a little bit better I'm not still I'm still not satisfied with this spot over here but I'm gonna go ahead and move on and, and attack all the water next so if I click local adjustments notice this is not selected anymore if I select it it's going to add another control point to this exposure to these this cluster of control points so if I keep it deselected and I come down here to the water and I create another one and I I'm okay with that size for now and I'll bump the exposure on this a little bit and I'll add another control point down here maybe another one over here shrink that a little bit And sometimes you have to zoom in to get the toolbar out of the way so you can work with it. And maybe I'll put another one over here as well and shrink that a little bit. And you can see we're getting a little bit more detail over in the water. Not so much that it doesn't look unnatural, but we can still see more of the shoreline as it follows down the trees. And the trees reflecting into the water. And if we compare the before, the um, original edit I did with the new one, we're pretty close. I think I ended up raising exposure overall. Let me double check that on, on the two of them and see what we did. Yes, see, I ended up going just a, almost a half stop more exposed when I worked on this a little bit earlier. And then that means I have to take the exposure down in the clouds here and I simply just click the control point and slide down on the exposure and if you click and hold it and start to adjust it notice how it says drag uh, drag right for accurate value hold and drag and I can control that a little bit more precisely Whoops! I accidentally added an extra control point and I don't want this at zero I know I put this a little bit higher and maybe maybe about a quarter of a stop is what I was aiming for and that looks a lot better And from here, I can export this and distribute that wherever I want to share it. And what I ended up doing is I used a program I picked up from a humble bundle about a few, several months ago. Not quite a year, but I can't remember how long ago it was. But it was a big photography pack. A lot of the tools I don't know if I'd ever use or not. But I decided to try Photo Mirage that was bundled with the, with the humble bundle pack. 
and I ended up getting the clouds and the water to animate and you could tell it's not real it's not from a video but it does look fairly nice for what it is um, it kinda just uses some f frame blending to make the clouds or, or whatever you end up animating look like it's moving uh, it's not perfect but it it does what it aims to do um, and whether you like it or not that's your opinion it was just an ex uh, opportunity for me to experiment with it and see if it's something I want to continue to use or not so if you're happy with this or if you have any questions feel free to comment and let me know what you think or if you want to give me some tips or you want some clarification on something else or if you even just want to request uh, one of my photos to for me to do a video for let me know so I know what to uh, what to address next time thanks a lot